Hey everybody, welcome to uh, the next episode of Seize Your Business Podcast. I'm Brian McDonald from On Purpose Growth and uh, my co-host here, Kevin O'Flaherty from uh, O'Flaherty Law. Hello. And today we have Matt Scales, a local entrepreneur uh, working in commercial real estate as well as uh, he's got his own startup uh, business that he'll talk about with two of his partners. And today we're talking about uh, the journey startups go through and uh, the challenges that they have and experience Matt has had in uh, in Star uh, so welcome Matt and uh, why don't you give a little introduction uh, about yourself sure thanks for having me guys I appreciate it uh, good to be here uh, enjoy Absolutely. watching some of the uh, previous podcasts that you guys have done I think they're uh, enjoyable Thank you. Uh, inspirational it's good uh, good information for folks out there uh, in the business world so and maybe those wanting to get in so kudos well, thank, thank you man. appreciate Absolutely. it yeah glad to be here um looking forward to just chatting through some of the experiences that uh that i've gone through hopefully that uh helps to shed some light for other folks out there uh, maybe as a resource or um, some tips that maybe I wish I would have known uh, at those you know at those stages of uh, of the game uh, to to push forward with. So awesome. good uh, good to be here. Looking forward to chatting through uh, the topics today. So I'll let cool. you guys uh, lead the way and jump yeah. in. So w w let's start with I mean pretty simple. What are some of the top things that you see startups struggling with? Because there's I, I'm sure there's a list of a hundred different things that startup owners have to worry about. What are some of the common problems you see in, in some of the solutions? Sure, no, uh, I think those are great questions. Um, just from, and I guess the best thing I can speak to is, is what I've gone through, um, constantly reading articles every day, probably too much. Uh, I catch myself uh, getting sidetracked very easily, uh, which would probably be one of the problems. Uh, yeah, right? staying, <laughs> staying focused, staying consistent. Uh, I think that those are important, but um, I always go back to a, a great article that I read a few years ago, um, just about really what, what makes a, a product good. And it generally starts with the team uh, and the right people and, and surrounding yourself with um, people that maybe do something better that you don't do well at. Mm -hmm. I, think those are, I think those are important things uh, to, to keep in mind and people that you trust and that you can build a, uh, a, a trustful long-term relationship with. Because at the end of the day, uh, as you guys well know, it's a grind. And when you're battling it out at 11 o'clock at night trying to get uh, an idea and a, and a concept completed and on, you know, on, on paper or on, uh, on a digital platform, it, it takes uh, good friendship uh, and someone that you can feel good about working with to, to get there. I think that's important. Getting the right people is probably the biggest difference maker for our business, like going from losing me money to you know, being stable. Um, we, when I first started and, you know, even a couple of years into it, I was trying to put together these great systems that would allow me to micromanage everybody, which was, you know, turned out to be a mistake. Um, I still really love thinking in systems, but like you said, you have to have key people that you trust. And when my focus shifted from making plug and play jobs that anybody could do to just getting the right people, trusting them to run their areas, and uh, you know, basically less micromanagement, things really started to turn around in a positive way. So I think what you're saying makes a, a uh, lot of sense. And that's key, and that's another uh, element, uh, just based on seeing what, what's worked, what hasn't, um, and you know, again, reading, as many, as, reading through as many resources as I, as I possibly can, talking to folks that have been there and done that or and have made it successful, is is exactly that don't micromanage anyone you've got a if you put someone in a box they're not going to be able to be productive in a way that makes them special or unique mm -hmm. and gives it that uh, element of surprise maybe if you will that uh, otherwise you were trying to control uh, and i'm i'm guilty of that too because i just feel like if you know if you want it done the way you want it done then you just do it yourself but yeah, sometimes right. <laughs> that's not always the right way and that's why you have a, a team member or a partner or a friend that is able to give that other point of view that maybe otherwise you wouldn't have. So I know you have the, uh, the blog that, you know, highlights businesses and startups and, uh, and whatnot, and, and, and you put a lot of work into that. Is there some type of theme in regards to the challenges that uh, those businesses are going through or, or some quality that helps them get through challenges so they can uh, thrive and survive in the marketplace? Sure. I mean, I, 
I enjoy doing those. It's fun. I, first off, I enjoy writing. Uh, whether or not it's good is, you know, uh, in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's fun for me to, to reach out, find these uh, local entrepreneurs uh, in the Chicagoland area and beyond. But uh, this is relatively new for me to, to start working on that. So I've only written uh, a handful. Uh, but it's been fun finding these individuals out there that have overcome a challenge uh, or more uh, and continue to overcome them to get to where they are. I just uh, interviewed and, and wrote about a gal in uh, Westmont who started her very first veterinary clinic called uh, Urban Veterinary Associates and tremendous story. She was ready to start her business. She had the location set up. Um, she had worked as a, as, a, as a vet director at various clinics ar around the Chicagoland area, was ready to take that strategic leap of faith forward and, and go at it on her own. And um, about a couple of months before she was supposed to break ground on a new location, she decided to get some last minute volunteer work in. And so she went to Tanzania uh, to work with a, a charity group called uh, Mission Rabies. And what they do is they vaccinate um, pets, if you will, uh, dom somewhat domesticated pets in the, the Tanzanian mm -hmm. uh, area. And so she's out there, she's there for a two week stint halfway through her, her visit um, there with uh, her other crew members. She goes back to the hotel and suffers a headache, a significant headache. And the last thing she remembers is losing vision. And four hours later, uh, she woke up in a hospital. She had suffered a brain aneurysm. So oh this is God. literally oh, wow. ju just a, a few short weeks from when she's supposed to open up a, a brand new business. She's got the lease. She's got everything ready to go. She's you know paid um, architects to do the interior design. She's got GCs on uh, on call, ready to ready to go to work. She spends a month. In, uh, well, first off, they airlifted her from Tanzania to Nairobi because they weren't equipped to take care of the, the bleeding in her brain. So she ends up spending a month, uh, an entire month, in Nairobi in, uh, in a hospital, wow. in a hospital bed. She had lost the use of the left side, left side of her body and fought through it. Uh, and these are stories that are so incredible. So she finally makes it back to the United States after a month later. And with the idea squarely on her mind that she still needs to open and start a business, Yeah, right. she goes through uh, rehab, and what she does during rehab is she uses these surgical tools that um, she would have to use in her veterinary clinic practice, uh, and she practices suturing things together to get the dexterity back in her in her, in her hands, and well, in her, certainly in her left side, uh, to be able to, to do it. It's an incredible story. Incredible. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and those are fun things. To me, uh, now, is that a challenge that everyone's going to face? Probably yeah. not. Um, not like uh, you know how to pick the best partners. That's a, a more common <laughs> yeah. one. But I, the reason I enjoy writing about those things is hopefully that it helps someone else see that there is it can be done no matter what the level of challenge is. Um, so what's the name of your blog? Uh, so it's on uh, it's on my website uh, montyrealestateservice.com. Um, I hang my license with that properties commercial uh, great uh, great organization uh, to, to be involved with commercial brokers with uh, I have my own website just to work the search engine uh, value and and uh, set a, set that aside but um, it's on there and uh, you can check it out it's around the home her, her story is actually on the home page right now uh, and I've written some other ones as well that I think personally are equally inspirational and um, maybe a little different we'll uh, make sure to link to that in the show notes if yeah you're cool. listening so what it sounds like from what you were saying, Kevin, and, and what you're saying, Matt, is that uh, in times that, that startups face challenges, uh, it doesn't matter what the challenge, it matters how resourceful you are when you face that challenge. I mean, that, that's like, a really, really good point because I was thinking the same thing when you're telling that story. Yeah, no one has that exact problem. Sure. But, you know, there's no. It, it really is just hard to come up with a cookie cutter set of problems that startups are going to face. That's Indeed. the nature of being a startup. You're going to wake up and face a new crisis, you know, at least That's once a fun, week. That's right? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah. Banging my head against the wall. <laughs> what are, I, and I guess to kind of go to that point, what do you guys think are some of the like key tools, problem solving tools that you need to have as the owner of a startup in order to survive whatever the problem is that you're having? Well, I, from my experience and also listening to others uh, go through it, I think it's some self-confidence. I think that's always one of the biggest challenges that anyone faces. I know I've faced it um, and I still face it sometimes where you, you feel one day you feel great about what you're doing. This is going to work. The next day you're like, 
shit, what am I doing? Is this the, <laughs> yeah. did I make the right decision here? Yeah. Um, and I uh, actually had interviewed another gal, Melissa Villanueva, who started Brewpoint Coffee in Elmhurst. Uh, oh, yeah. Very cool story as well. But what she had mentioned that she does, and she's a, a very young entrepreneur in her early 20s, mid 20s. Uh, she says she meditates every morning and she focuses on believing in herself. She you know, puts uh, the belief power towards her team members as well. And I do it. So after you know, chatting with her a few months ago, I've you know, incorporated that into my routine and it, uh, it helps every morning. Uh, just some things like that to believe in yourself, I think is, is a key thing and do it not with blinders on. Um, I was like the, uh, the the comment someone had made a while back uh, when we first started the golf board business, uh, which was, uh, "Did you run this idea past anyone but your mom?" Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Luckily, uh, yeah. we did, and uh, that was uh, one of the only uh, negative uh, feedback uh, that we had received on it at the time. And um, oh. everything since then has been positive. But it's good to, you know, to step outside the comfort zone and ask some folks that aren't your mom or, or your your wife or husband or whatever it may be yeah. and um, get um, just get some hard feedback and meditation is something that I did for a while too and it really helped I I only stopped doing it because I found other ways to ratchet down the stress and it, but you know when the when you're a business owner sometimes you just get wrapped up in the stress of you know holding the world world on your shoulders and when you're under a lot of stress you're not making sharp decisions so sure. if you can get your exercise in your meditation eat healthy and just keep your body and mind right and have that confidence to know that when your body and mind right you make good, good decisions that's a huge absolutely boost. yeah i agree and working out is definitely a key mm -hmm. thing I, I try to go uh, at least five days a week and um you know take uh take care of the body and the mind i agree 100 percent. when i first started on my couch i found that you know okay oh wow i can bill bill hours as an attorney and i, I keep all of it Man, I'm working every weekend. I'm just gonna be, you know, I, I'm gonna. I, there's, it, it's a new business. I'm not sure it's gonna work. So I'm gonna. I'm, there's not gonna be a moment that I take the foot off the pedal. And that was before I had kids, so I could do that. But I quickly found out that it was counterproductive, or there were diminishing returns to just continually powering through. And I, I found that I'm much better at what I do and much more productive if I set rules for myself as to when I'm working and when I'm off. And I think that's a key point, absolutely. And if you just think you're just gonna sit there and grind 15, 16 hours a day and do that seven days a week or six days a week, whatever it may be, that's not productive. I agree with you 100%. And I, and I sometimes still get caught up in that uh, uh, predicament with myself. And it's like, I gotta step away. Uh, spend some time with my, my daughters, you know, do something that is uh, fulfilling and, and not that the work isn't fulfilling because it should be or else do something different but uh, which I think is another uh, key element um, and I've experienced that firsthand I started uh, doing some work uh, in a couple of gaming startups um, uh, when Illinois passed the video gaming act oh, yeah. uh, we got involved uh, we were inside of an entrepreneurial shop and uh, some guys much smarter than I uh, were in there as well and I was able to learn from them and got involved in the in the gaming industry not because I've always yearn to be in the gambling industry but because it was a new startup it was a new industry for illinois and um i wanted the challenge but um you know i've since moved on and it just wasn't a fulfilling thing for me not that there's anything wrong with anyone else that's in that business just right for me I, I wasn't i wasn't feeling good about it anymore so i you know i moved on so i think that you're right it's got to be something that you feel good about and that you don't just grind away and burn out um after three or four months uh, stepping away is, is important. When, and you, you consider your mental downtime, you know, like I, I like to watch Ken Burns documentaries, especially like the one on I baseball. That's, it, a great, that's, a, that's the greatest like, documentary ever. That baseball yeah. is phenomenal. It, it, it inst I've, I've watched it a couple times, but it like instantly relaxes me. Yeah. It's an effort to stay awake. I mean, it's interesting, but like, you know, it's three hours on baseball in the 1920s. You, you just get to a zen, relaxed place. Yeah, indeed. But you consider that work time. I mean, that's part of what you're doing to get yourself mentally in a good place to continue going. It's like like exercise. It's mental, the mental detox, basically, that you have to go through in order to be sharp and make good decisions. Day sure. Day. But, I mean, uh, th that's a hard balance. That was one of the hardest first challenges I had to face was just getting the mental balance right, the work-life balance, and... And finding a system, you know, I talked about systems thing, finding a system that would work in my life to allow me to, you know, sustainably run the business rather than just push 
super hard for you know a year and burn out well and i'm curious did you find that you had to sacrifice a lot uh like time with friends or time with family or you know not getting in the for me around a golf that maybe you'd like to do mm-hmm. when it's you know the last warm friday of the season um which i did take advantage of last friday but, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, did you sacrifice did you find yourself you know, missing out on things to some degree well i feel like if you're not setting rules you do you know, I, I, I think in, in the first year is different. When you're first starting, it's hard to have those rules. But it's, eventually, you've got to get an equilibrium. And now, you know, I, even a couple of years in, when I was right, when I was doing things, when I was in the right head sp- space, I wasn't making a ton of sacrifices. I was working like everybody else was. I was just way more efficient at it than I would have been had I been working for someone else. You know, I was, it was the work smarter, not harder. Um, but, you know, you, you shouldn't sacrifice being with your kids if you got kids you know right. that's you, you have to build that time in so I, I i i guess my answer is when there was a crisis or you know something that had to be done for a client that weekend i would occasionally work out all weekend and sacrifice but once you get the equilibrium you know and that happens faster for some people than it does for others but i, I don't feel like i bust my tail you know, working longer hours than people who just go to a day job. I agree, and I don't buy into the notion, and, um, you know, my folks were hard workers, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that generation um, was full of hard workers, not to suggest that our generation now isn't, because I think that they are, but the notion that you need to grind 40, 50, 60 hours a week, and then by the time you're 60, you can retire and enjoy life, I think it's BS. Mm -hmm. I don't want to wait till I'm 60 to be able to yeah, right. climb a mountain or exactly. you know, do something along those lines. I think it's, to your point, which is another um, key takeaway, I would say, is time management and working smarter, not harder. And um, I think I mentioned before, I get guilty of it by spending, you know, I'll read an email, an article, which leads me to another one, and all of a sudden <laughs> I forgot about the task of writing that blog or getting, yep. um, you know, getting that contract completed. So that's key, and that's something that I try to work on every day is just what are some of your key time management tricks that you would tell people to follow if they're just getting into that i keep my calendar and you know i put um i put an hour to, to do project a an hour to do project b in between those i might set aside 15 minutes or 20 minutes to ret- return phone calls i don't answer the phone if i don't recognize the number um and i know we talked about this yeah, um, absolutely uh, <laughs> offline on another uh, comment about you know just getting sidetracked and taking every phone call um, for starters, I, I don't like not being prepared for whatever that uh, caller may want to discuss. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it takes me away and I become reactive instead of proactive. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think reaction uh, is what pushes the ball forward. It's, it's being proactive. And even with the simple thing of not answering the phone every time it rings, especially if you're engaged in a conversation or a meeting, uh, it trains you to focus. In, in my perspective, it trains you, trains you to focus as well as uh, it, it, it keeps you from being constantly reactive, constantly reactive. And especially if you're dealing with, uh, you're, uh, you're working with clients and you're always answering the phone, it's that one time that you don't answer, they get upset at you because you've trained them that you are reactive, right? So it's a, sure. you know, my perspective is it's a balanced thing. It's like stay on focus and you can actually get more done. And if I don't know who the number is, I don't answer it and you leave a message and I'll get back to you, right? right. It's, uh, um, it, there's, I believe there's too much in this world that people just respond, 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 no matter what. And uh, it's trained our world to think in a flawed way. You become a slave to the grind yeah. um, versus controlling it. And, uh, and I think that that's, that's key. Another um, you know, thing that I like to do, I just read a great book um, called The Organized Mind. Um, it's a little hard to get through. It's written by like this PhD in neuroscience. Oh, yeah. uh, but it's yeah. all about how to... Uh, how to stay focused in a very um, information busy um, world that we live in. And uh, he talks about techniques and like, part of what he says is focusing on the task at hand. Don't try to multitask. Anyone that says they're multitasking is, is full of it because you're not going to do well. If I spend one hour talking on the phone, typing an email at the same time and trying to get a presentation out, I'm not giving any one of those three the best quality time that I can give it, mm-hmm. and certainly not 100% of uh, uh, the goodness that should go towards it. I like to start my day, you know, and I'm sure you guys do the same thing. I think, I think everyone that successfully time management, time manages does this, but first thing I do before anything, you know, maybe I'll check my calendar, see what I got going on for the day. 
but then I order my to-do list. I've got a Google Sheet that I keep that's mm -hmm. a running to-do list, divided it into A, B, and C, mm -hmm. and D. D being delegate, A has to be done today, B is time sensitive, C is not time sensitive. I'm rarely in the C zone. I would love to be in the C zone yeah, right. more <laughs> often. Uh, but you know, and, and then you go one, two, three, four in the top category and then move on. And emails are usually, you know, somewhere in B. They're, you know, B2 or B3, but I don't automatically just have my email open and I'm, you know, waiting to respond like you were saying. Sure. Returning phone calls, that's gonna be its own category. It's gonna be the stuff that, you know, maybe is time sensitive, but not has to be done today. And and then you focus on each line of that Excel sheet. It feels great to tick a couple it lines does, off. Yeah, tick them off. Tick and, them off. and you don't worry about any any extraneous stuff until you get to it. On you know, add it to your to do list if it comes in. Right on. Don't address it immediately unless that's the most urgent thing. For sure. No, I think that's spot on. And in fact, in the same book that was mentioned, he talked about uh, when he uh, was going to going to school. Uh, the, I think it's Dan, uh, Dan Levithan or something like that uh, who wrote the book Organized Mind. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely recommend it. But he talked. About about a very similar thing you just described where he was interning for a, a company and the CEO, and this is, he's an older fellow, so at the time they had stacks of mail and he did the same thing, he categorized, this is important mail, this is stuff I can wait for, and it was, you know, this, these are stacks of mail and papers uh, on his desk, which it's smart to hear you yeah. say that because that's... Uh, so no matter on. what the time it is, no matter what tools we're using, the concept you're saying is a very powerful concept that lasts through time. Whether you've got digital things or paper things in front of you, it's uh, uh, it's a powerful message to hear. Sure, you could take that all the way back to um, the hunter-gatherer days and say, you know, I've got four hours of uh, sunlight left. I better go hunt and get my fire built, or yeah, right, <laughs> or, or I can sit here and. You know, watch the uh, watch the waves roll in. Time management, right? <laughs> and, uh, and 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 uh, go to sleep hungry by that's watching right. the waves, right? Exactly. <laughs> Possibly die tomorrow. Possibly. Right? <laughs> well, that's something. You know, Matt, thank you so much for uh, <laughs> for joining us. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll link to your blog. Give us the name of the blog one more time. So uh, Monty Real Estate Service dot com. Okay, and, great. Uh, we'll link to that, that in the show notes, and we appreciate you sharing your wisdom with us. Yeah, today. thank you guys. Yeah, I thanks, appreciate it. Thanks for being on, man. Thank appreciate you. It. Great.